retail sales numbers are out for June, and they rose by half a percent. The figures represent spending in U.S. stores and their websites and restaurants. At the same time, the May figures were adjusted upwards by half a percent from 0.8 percent to 1.3 percent. And here to look at retail details and what it, what it is is Melissa Armo. She's the CEO of the Stock Swoosh. Welcome, Melissa. We always love having you. Just when we thought that Welcome. things may be looking not so great, these new numbers come out and the May numbers were revised upward. What's your take, Melissa? Yeah, I think that was really probably part of the boost you've seen in the last couple of days, the rally in the market. A lot of these stocks have just been rallying, rallying, rallying. Amazon came out with a prime day this week, so there was a lot of reasons for retail to get a lift, not just the upwards momentum from the May numbers, but the June numbers as well. Uh, Melissa, I, I, I noted uh, on Sunday uh, an iconic 80-year-old Sears store, an Irving Park neighborhood in Chicago, closed down for good. And the, the closure, which was one of 529 or 530 remaining Sears stores, is part of a current closure of about 78 stores around the, around the nation. Uh, what does this say about brick and mortar in today's largely online world? I'm telling you, Bart, it's really the future in some ways is bright, but in some ways it's bleak. What do I mean by that? I think Amazon is going to put a lot of these retailers out of business, which you could look at it from one perspective and say it's good for consumers because you can get Amazon products so cheap and they offer so many things, one-stop shopping, and at really reasonable prices. But on the other side of it, it's going to put a lot of people out of business that have jobs at these stores, and also it has taken away from the shopping experience. I've said this before, I think, on the show. Whole Foods was bought out by Amazon, and I love to shop at Whole Foods. It will never be the same. The experience isn't the same anymore. The personal touch, there's a lot of things that are not on the shelves anymore. The store looks a mess when you go in there, and you don't have the same customer service. So you're going to see that more and more and more when you go to shop at these places, things are going downhill and they're going downhill fast. Look at Toys R Us. Toys R Us went out of business and for all you know, Amazon pushed them out of business as well. Amazon made brand new all-time highs again today, over $1,851 a share. It seems like nothing is stopping this and Jeff Bezos now is the richest man in the world at $150 billion. And you say, you know, is this a good thing for us or is this a bad thing for us? They're going to be pushing people out of business. Not just Sears, not just Toys R Us, other people too. If we have time, I want to get back to Amazon, but I want to get sort of the, the bigger picture here too, Melissa, on what are the bright spots, sort of the areas of retail that are uh, doing well. Is it, is it restaurants? Is it, uh, you know, sporting goods? What is it where, that, that people are really going after now? Well, the only, the only stock that I like that seems to be doing well that's attempting to compete with Amazon is Target. Target is still holding very, very strong. They came out with their own thing in the last couple of days where they're offering a lot of sales to try to compete alongside the Amazon Prime Day. You had other retailers doing that too. Macy's is doing like a Black Friday thing, but the stock really doesn't look that great. Macy's stock is not in an uptrend. Target looks good, and they're trying to compete with Amazon and go toe-to-toe -to -toe because the prices there are good, and they do have brick-and-mortar stores, and they're getting people in. But I'm telling you, it, it's a problem. Walmart stock doesn't look that great, but Walmart came out with this new thing. They're doing a 3D. You can put different furniture pieces in and try to play around and see how your furniture looks before you buy it, but the stock doesn't look that good. Walmart's going to try to compete with Amazon and Target, too, but I don't know if in the end they're going to be able to do it. Uh, you mentioned, uh, back to Amazon, you mentioned Prime Day, uh, which I guess started yesterday, 3 o'clock Eastern, and uh, went today, but it didn't go that well. They had a co some computer problems. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, that was interesting. They had problems, but they still had tons of sales. People hung in there because I guess at 36 hours, it wasn't like just it was a 24-hour period where they were doing the sale. So they ended up fixing the problems. But, you know, for all I know, the site could have crashed. I mean, probably so many people came and wanted to spend. And I don't know what the totals are going to be by the time it's all said and done, but the stock may continue rising through this whole prime period because people are going and people are signing up and people are buying things. And now they're doing this where they're offering special discounts to prime members even to buy food and now they're doing the food delivery services. All these cities, all of a sudden, now you can order food delivery. Uh, and not just in New York, not just in L.A., Chicago, Dallas. I mean, all over the place they're offering this. That's something new. I'm telling you, Amazon is going to dip their toe and put their foot into any single thing that they possibly can to make money. There's nothing stopping them. 
And, you know, I'm telling you that for the little mom and pops and even mid, mid-range stores, I just don't see how they're going to compete. Uh, I'll tell you one thing about the, the, the Amazon delivery, and this is a personal anecdote. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they will get their stuff together. But we ordered the other day from a place, and uh, we get a call from an 877 number, and it says, uh, hi, this is Amazon. Uh, I need uh, to uh, check some of your personal details. Now, you know, who knows that they're really calling, who knows they're really from Amazon? Uh, you know, I wrote a book about fraudsters, Ponzimonium, and uh, I, that's one of my red flags. Never give anybody your information uh, if it's just calling you. They well, didn't did say. did you get your food? We, we <laughs> canceled food? the order, and we went to the <laughs> restaurant directly, uh, and which wasn't a oh. bad thing for our health. Uh, but they've got, they ha are having some growing pains in this stuff. Uh, but but does, do the Grubhubs, they have to watch out, the Door Dashes, the, the Uber Eats, all those guys are on their target, Amazon That's target I mean. list, right? Yeah. Yep, all of them. But this is, I'm telling you, anything else, Amazon was still looking into healthcare, real estate. We talked about this even six months ago. Trust me when I say they are going to try to dip their toe into being a full service for everything you would ever, ever need. And I don't know if that's a good thing is what I'm saying. If you own the stock, it is. But as consumers, I'm not sure we're, we're going to have less choices and less quality. And in the end, I don't know if that's really what we want. Well, I think we're going to have to have Andre Barlow in here to talk about antitrust in the future. Anyway, we thank you for always being with us. The clever as ever CEO of the Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks. And it's time now for a brief talk.